Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Clarice Fluid. I'm your Supernatural Life Coach. Today we're going to be talking about a very important topic. Why do good people suffer? Why do people that do it all right seem to continuously find some opportunities to overcome? It's all in the Word of God and you're gonna be happy to find out about it. I'll be right back with you. Dr. Clarice Fluid is an internationally recognized supernatural life coach. She is a time-proven prophetess with laser-like accuracy. It's never too early and it's never too late for you to achieve your dream. Reports of amazing miracles and healings occur in her meetings. For more than four decades, she has a distinguished worldwide reputation as a Christian mentor. There are those who desire the benefit of success, but they choose not to embrace change. Her experiences as a mentor, life coach, and enterprising businesswoman allow her to share her proven strategies for building the kingdom, inspiring individuals, and generating sustainable growth. If you want to do new things, I encourage you to invest in yourself. She has shared the stage with some of the world's most influential pioneers, including Steve Forbes, Les Brown, Susie Orman, Patricia King, Joan Hunter, Cindy Jacobs, Shaquille O'Neal, and many more. Welcome to Wisdom for Success with Dr. Clarice Fluid. You know, when we begin to look in the Word of God, I am amazed about the scripture in 2 Corinthians 4, 8 and 9. I have read this all my days, and I guess we just kind of skim over it, but this is what it says. We are afflicted in every way. What? Every way? But we're not crushed. We are perplexed, but we're not despairing. We're persecuted, but we're not abandoned. We're struck down, but we're not destroyed. You think, my goodness, is this an invitation to join your club? This sounds very, very hard. Well, let's take a look at what the Word of God says. Scripture tells us that we are afflicted. We are afflicted or double-minded, uh, uh, what we talk about, undecided about things. But I wanted to find out, what does that mean? What do you mean that when I am afflicted? And it actually translates, this is from my notes here, weakened, harassed, knocked down in every way. Now, if the Bible says that's going to happen to you, you're going to have these kind of opportunities to overcome, that I need to be prepared in a way, not thinking, well, you know, since I've, found Jesus, I'm not going to ever have any problems. You know, when I was a young girl and I first got saved and this enthusiastic, wonderful young evangelist, he t said this, he was teaching. He says, you know, now that you have found Jesus in your heart, you're never going to have another problem. You don't have to worry about anything that you do. Once saved, always saved. And that's what I heard, whether that's exactly what he was saying or not. Many times we take people's words apart from the spirit with which they're speaking and we get real confused about our theology. So that's why we are continuously changing, not just rearranging, that we are growing into the things of God. So I heard him tell me, you know, you'll never have another problem. Well, I believed that and then I began to have problems and I didn't know how to handle them. I just said, what? Well, I thought that as a Christian, you weren't going to have any problems. I'm going to tell you something. Once you become a Christian, that God begins that wonderful unwrapping the Adamic nature and mindset that you've been operating under. And he says, be transformed or metamorphosed through the renewing of your mind. And my question was, anytime you put R-E in front of something, it presupposes that it once was. So I said to the Lord, when was my mind new? You know, if I'm going to renew it, if I'm going to renew my house, if I'm going to renew my furnishings, if I'm going to renew my wardrobe, if I'm going to, anything that you're going to renew, it infers that once it was new and now it's going to be new again. So I said, when was my mind new? When, when was this all done? And the Lord says, you've got to know that you're my idea. Each and every one of us on the face of the earth that we began, before you know your mother's womb, you were a thought of God. You lived in the heart of God. There are things that you saw and God released us to come to this earth to at exactly the time, the, exactly the 
situation, circumstances, and we are like a great tapestry. God is working all of these things together. So I'm not understanding, you know, Lord, all of a sudden I've got all these problems that are going on and I don't have a way to solve these problems. When we talk about the things of the Lord, we talk about pain, we talk about distress, we talk about hardship, all of these different negative things, negative energy. Many of us believe erroneously. If we give our life to Jesus, we, we shouldn't have any problems. And then we get under condemnation and we say, and people tell me all the time, you know, I'm not into this suffering. Now you start teaching that we're gonna suffer in this life. I believe Jesus paid the price for all of our suffering. Do you know anybody in your life, anybody that has lived any length of time that has not had opportunities to overcome? And so if you don't understand when negative things happen, if you don't understand what's going on, well, my goodness gracious, when it comes, you're gonna take it personal and you're gonna think, what's gone wrong? Then it's, we get into big, big devil, little, little God. I bind you, devil, 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 devil. But I'm telling you, Jesus said on Calvary, he said, it is finished. Did you know the it he was talking about? He's talking about the devil is finished. Jesus has defeated hell, death, and the grave. And I know that's true because the thief on the cross that obviously had done nothing but, but steal and lie and cheat, done everything bad. He was joining in with the other thief and, and making fun of Jesus. And then suddenly he turns to Jesus and he says, oh, he says, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus said to this man who had never been water baptized, who had never attended any kind of meetings, had never done anything good in his life, except he believed. So what did Jesus say? No, you dirty, rotten thief. I'm not going to have anything to do with you. You think you're going to just come in and get in my kingdom and you weren't a tither and you weren't a, a, a part of what we were doing? No, Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. What did he do? What did that thief do that he didn't have to be water baptized? He didn't have to do any of that. You know what he did? He believed. And God says, if you only believe. Now, believe does not mean, it's not a noun, it's a verb, and it's, it's an action word. And when you say, I am a believer, then if I be, then I'm going to do. But if I do so that I can be, then it's all messed up. So we are learning to say, I be, and because I be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Oh my goodness, then when all these afflictions come our way, then there's a power and strength. The supernatural faith of God kicks in and we begin to, rather than saying devil, 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 we begin to say, you mighty God, I worship you, I adore you, I put my full faith in you. Oh my goodness, you've got the antidote to the Antichrist and it's in worship and praise. It's in magnifying the Lord. It's putting your faith into action. You begin to create with the fruit of your lips. When, when something really negative takes place, oh, you begin to say, Lord, I thank you right now. Watch this. We are persecuted. That means ill-treated because of our ethnicity, because of our religion, because of our orientation that's sexual, our political beliefs, but we're not forsaken. Think about it. You may be persecuted about all these things that you're not like everybody else in their opinions and thoughts and ideas. But the Lord says, you're not forsaken. You're not abandoned. We're not deserted. God says, I'm with you. I may not feel like I'm with you, but lo, I am with you always. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Do you believe that? Oh my goodness, that needs to become a refrigerator scripture for you and just put it right down right through there. He says, look, we are not removed. We are still valuable. And you think, oh, I've just, I've messed up so bad. Some, uh, some of these bad things that come to us because of something we did do, but it's just in the plan of God. You're going to be tried. Your faith is going to be tested. And the Lord says, are you going to murmur? Are you going to complain? Are you going to get bitter? Are you going to get better? We are progressively growing, progressively uh, maturing in the things of God. We're cast down. Do you know what that means? Discouraged. Anybody been discouraged? We've been going through some interesting days. And the, to be discouraged, anytime you've got D-I-S in front of something, it's a negative thing. And we're, we're dis, uh, dejected. We're depressed. We're, we're, but we're not destroyed. 
That's what the scripture says. We're not destroyed, which means it puts an end to our existence. We're not dead. Come on, get up. You just say, I'm just so down. I'm so depressed. I'm so, the, I'm so perplexed. But the Lord says, get up. When I want you laying in that situation, I get so excited when I get on this topic, I can just hardly keep up with myself here. We're cast down. Oh, I, have you been cast down? Yes, all of us have had the opportunity to be discouraged and disappointed and say, you know, I just, what am I doing wrong? What, why is this not working? I thought I was going to get this job. I thought this relationship was going to work. I didn't know the divorce was going to come. I didn't know the kids were going to do this. I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know. Do you know, according to the word of God, no trial or test has come to you that God says, I've already prepared you. You already have the deposit in your spiritual bank to be able to take a deep breath and say, Lord God, rather than complaining, rather than murmuring, explaining all of these things that are going on, looking for somebody to listen to, woe is me, nobody knows the troubles I see. You just make it bigger. You just, it's like eating tripe. The more you chew it, the bigger it gets. I'm telling you, abstain, move back, take a deep breath. Don't enter into conflict. That's only through pride cometh strife and contention. Now, I didn't write that. I'm reporting to you. When you begin to find I'm in a situation where it's always filled with strife and contention, you know what's at the core of that? pride. Oh my goodness. And the word of the Lord comes and says here, we're cast down to utterly ruin someone emotionally, spiritually, or physically. When those kind of things come and say, we're going to take you down, you need to take a deep breath and come to this scripture that I've given you today in 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 9, and begin to say, Lord God, I'll tell you, it looks bad. It really looks bad. I'm pretty perplexed about all this. I'm, I really feel like I'm just discouraged and despondent. And don't take a pill unless it's a gospel. Take a deep breath and begin to praise and begin to praise. When you don't feel like it, when you don't feel like it, that's when you begin to, you have to strengthen yourself with the joy of the Lord. If the enemy can get your joy, he's going to get your stuff. That's just the way that it works. And there's no need for him to change his tactics. It's the way it always happens. Now that we've got this scripture, we understand what those things mean. I want to tell you on Christmas morning, Christmas morning, it was early. And it was cold where we live in Louisiana. It was down to 11 degrees. It was just absolutely un unseasonably cold and I got the phone call and in the phone call this voice comes over and says I wanted to call in to tell you that Susan's house has burned down everything that she owns and now Susan and her family are wonderful wonderful partners of ours and has been have been for years and years and they're missionaries they go all over the world they are the kindest people. I am telling you, they love God. That's on their mind night and day. They go, they do these prayer walks into places that are really negative and they go, oh my goodness, restoring the land. And it's just, these are the kind of people you want to know. I'm telling, they're just sweethearts. And since everything they own, there's, they were ran out of the house. The house was burning and she got her mama who lived with her, got her pets, her husband. And they all got outside and she said they were all in their bare feet. They were in their pajamas. It's 11 degrees outside. And she said, I took a deep breath and I started singing. Thanks be to God who always causes me to triumph in every situation. Bless the Lord, oh my soul and everything that is within me. She says, rather than saying, oh Lord, all my journals, my books, everything that I've worked for all my life, everything is gone. Going, just shoot in that instant, it was over with. And you think, oh my goodness. Well, thank God they were not hurt. And when I talked to her, they live in Waco, Texas. And I talked to her and I said, what can I do? And she said, Bishop, she says, uh, we are alive and well, we're not harmed. And she said, this one thing I know. And I said, what is that, Susan? She said, this time next year, I'll have a new house. I'll have new furniture. I'll have new clothes. I will 
have a new life going and I won't have to worry about cleaning out the attic. I won't have to think about all these things that I've been putting off around here. The Lord just allowed this thing to, she said, it's going to be fine. And I said, well, in the meantime, tell me what you need. And she says, right now I need a pair of shoes. Right now I need some clothes. And I said, well, let me tell you what we're going to do. I sent three missionaries over there. I said, I'm, they'll be there tomorrow and they'll have clothes and they'll have money and they'll have goods because it's within your ability to do good. When it's within your ability to help, you need to jump in and begin to activate that muscle that reaches out and strengthens other people because the the, the more generous you become, the, the more gracious you become, I'm telling you, that draws the grace of God to you. These things are, you know, when you just say, I'll be back, I'll be back, I'm going to do something good for the kingdom of God. You know, right now, I'm going to be back in just a moment with you, and we're going to finish this story of why good people suffer. Get ready because Dr. Clarice Fluid is dedicated to teaching you how to create a partnership between your words and your faith. She wants to inspire you, mentor you, equip you to live up to your best self no matter who you are. Visit ClariceFluid.org to find all the customized mentoring resources and coaching tools you'll ever need to be empowered in reaching your highest goals and dreams. You'll find all of her great books there. In Rescript Your Future, you'll find power proclamations for your life, business, and government that will show you how the words you speak can take you from where you are presently to where you'd like to be. Change your words and you can change the trajectory of your life. It's time to get unstuck and move into the manifestation of answered prayers. Dr. Clarice invites you to join her in her live interactive teleconferences at clarissefluid.org where she will personally teach you how to shift your circumstances into a position of favor. Go now to clarissefluid.org. You know, many, many times as we begin to grow in the grace and the knowledge of God's ways and that we find out that God's not who we think He is, He's who He says He is. And I want to ask you, have you ever had a circumstance or a situation in your life where you think, how did this happen to me? I ha what can I do? This is such a terrible situation. And that we find ourselves just saying, "What? how am I? I don't know what to do about this situation. I don't have the money to pay the bills. I don't have the, the ability to get my family out of jail. I don't have whatever is going on. Circumstances take place in our life that try our faith. Now, when those bad things come into your life and all of us experience it, that's the thing that you need to know today. God did not just pick you out and say, I'm just going to try you day and night. I'm going to try your kids. I'm going to try your life. I'm gonna, it's just bad things that are going to happen. And the devil's doing this and the devil's doing that. Let me tell you something. When those negative things begin to take place, I begin to look in the Word of God. And when I begin to look in the Word of God, I found out that God's favorite people, the people that were doing the work, that were just traveling and teaching and preaching and praying, that they were being persecuted, reviled, all manner of evil said, that all this stuff I just read to you, it was going on in the early church. And now we think if somebody gets our parking place that we're being persecuted. We have been so blessed and we have come into such a time that, that I just want to encourage myself while I'm encouraging you, get outside of the comfort zone that you might be living in and find out what you can do to encourage, to exhort, to edify, to build up, and to use your faith. Your faith is like a muscle. I know faith is grown and I know faith is a gift, but I tell you what, as you exercise faith, you begin to look for people that you can help. You begin to find, that, make a plan not to just watch TV or if, if somebody calls or something like that. No, you go out. You are the one. You're a head and not a tail. You're above and not beneath. And people may not understand your enthusiasm about reaching out to people, but I personally have developed a muscle toward reaching people in, out in public. I just, you know, I just try to smile at everybody and I try to be sensitive and I ask the Holy Spirit, is it all right if I talk to this person or talk to that person? 
And you know, people find, I find that, that I'm, you know, there's a difference between the gold bowl and the brassy bowl. I don't want to be brassy bowl, but I do want to be gold bowl. I do want to know. You never know who you're talking to, that you can just simply agree with them in faith for healing, for deliverance, for prosperity, for joy. You know, that you, you, you look for an opportunity. What would Jesus do? How would Jesus do it? He didn't heal everybody that he saw, but he healed the ones that the Father showed him. He says, I don't do anything that unless the Father lead me. But if you don't ask the Father and say, all right, today, when I get up, get out of bed, what, what is your plan for me? Where do you want me to go? Who do you want me to call? And put yourself in a position to be led by the Holy Spirit. Anticipate doing something other than the ordinary, going to work or doing the nine to five or having the meals or how are you doing or being the same person. Begin to put another gear inside of you and that gear is called the faithfulness of God. Let things begin to be released. Now, when looking at the, at the Bible and, and I, I wanted to share this scripture with you and the scripture is when uh, the Jews had come from Antioch and Iconium and they had come there and they were persuaded. They persuaded the multitude and they got mad at Paul and Paul was, what was he doing? He was preaching the word of God. You know what they did? They, they took Paul and they dragged him out of the city and they stoned him. Now, let me tell you something. He was stoned five different times in his ministry. And this is one of the favorites of God. This is a guy that really God gave revelation to. And so we know that it was not because he was such a bad person that all this awful stuff was happening to him, that the devil was doing this and the devil was doing that. God allowed him to be tried because the more he was, faith was being tried, it was, the scripture says, it pleases God. Now he's not sadistic, but he is pleased that we're going to trust him when these negative things are taking place in our life and we're not saying, oh, that's so unfair. Oh, you know, I did so much good. Why did this happen to me? No, hang on. Five different times, St. Paul is, is stoned. Now it was part of the law that when you stone somebody, you stone them to death and that the last stone was to be equal to the size of the head of the victim. And they would take that and throw it on top of the head and crush the head. Now, this is what they were doing with this great apostle. They dragged him out of the city. They know that he's dead. Okay, they've crushed his head and they walk away. However, when the disciples gathered around him, don't you know they were praying? And the next thing you know, oh, Paul, he is up and he was ready to go minister again. The supernatural power of God. And the next day, according to the word of God, the next day, Paul departs with Barnabas and they go to Derby. And when they preach the gospel there to the city and they made so many disciples and they returned to, to Lystra and Iconium and Antioch and they went about. Now, if you, if you understand that your calling and my calling as a believer is to strengthen the souls of, of the disciples, to exhort them to continue in the faith and say, we are going to have to go through many tribulations if we're going to enter into the kingdom of God. And you'll find that in Acts 14, 19 through 22. Now, th let, me, let me say it again. We will go through many tribulations to enter the kingdom of God. But your attitude toward those tribulations are very, very significant and very, very important. We've got to come say, when those negative things come, what are you going to do? Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to start praising God. I'm going to start clapping my hands. I've got to strengthen myself with the joy of the Lord. I used to call somebody and say, pray with me. This happening, that's happening. And I found out you better learn to pray for yourself because there are going to be times that there's not going to be other people together around you and get you up. You have got to learn how to activate, ratify, begin to prophesy to yourself, begin to say, yea, thus saith the Lord God Almighty. This is what's going on. 
today as we take this word of God and I pray that during your time that you are being strengthened, your soul is being strengthened by saying, Lord God, rather than taking this personal, this stuff that's going on in my life, I choose as an act of my faith that though we are afflicted and though that's going on, I'm not crushed. I might be perplexed, but I am not despairing. I'm persecuted, but I'm not abandoned. I get struck down, but not destroyed. You don't have to open doors for yourself. You say, I've been depressed. You know, I've submitted. I tried to get this job and I tried this and I tried that. I've been rejected. Woe is me. It's all. No, the timing is that you cast all your cares over upon the Lord. And rather than talking about how bad the devil is, begin to talk about how good God is. Begin to understand Jesus has defeated the devil. I believe that with all of my heart. And I believe what you bind on earth has already been bound in heaven. And we learn how to move from glory to glory. Can you say amen to that? Want to pray for you. Want to pray for you. And Lord, this suffering perplexing, afflicted, despairing spirit. I bind you in Jesus' name, and I know you're already bound in heavenly places. And I speak to those that are going through difficult times. Come up here and see what I see. Ascend on wings of worship and praise. See me, saith the Ancient of Days. Make a decision. Make a decision. A decision is never a conversion. But until you make a decision, don't waste your sorrow. Find that you can always get better instead of bitter. My name is Dr. Clary Fluid. I am your supernatural life coach. I love you with the love of the Lord. And I always get excited about having the opportunity to share the Word of God with you. Why don't you write to us? Why don't you just say, you know what? I'm going to encourage her. I'm going to encourage her because I know that she's having the opportunity to walk through some interesting times and seasons also. I look forward to being with you next week. God bless you. You're an overcomer. You're a pillar in the house of God. God can take an ordinary person and do extraordinary things. In Dr. Clarice Fluid's book, Ridiculous Miracles, she shares her personal testimonies of the power of God that heals the sick, raises the dead, and casts out demons. Through these testimonies, your faith will be increased, and you will learn how to order your conversation to be in agreement with God and see the supernatural manifestation of miracles in your life. In this book, you will read true stories of people healed of cancer, blindness, diabetes, barrenness, and even those who were raised from the dead. Ridiculous miracles will make you laugh, cry, and believe God for the impossible. And the powerful prayers and declarations of faith will stir you up and give you the tools you need to do the extraordinary. Go to ClariceFluid.org and get your copy today. Thank you for watching Wisdom for Success with Dr. Clarice Fluid, your supernatural life coach. Visit ClariceFluid.org to find Dr. Clarice's many books and teachings or join her for a coaching and mentoring session and step into your best life. Follow Dr. Clarice on social media to keep up to date with her and to be inspired daily. And join Dr. Clarice next week for your wisdom for success.